Well, it's a good morning. It is a good morning. Hope you're all doing well. So I felt like uh, jaw boning here this morning. The topic is knowing your model will deliver. Now, for some of you that are listening, uh, you may have not at this point discovered what your unique model is going to be for trading. And that's good. That's fine. There's no rush. This is a very important stage of your development because many students, not just mine, but anyone really that takes on the endeavor of trying to learn how to trade and speculate in these markets, they rush. And that, that tendency to feel impatient, it's overwhelming. It feels like if you don't do it right now, you're going to miss out entirely and everybody else is at the party having fun and you want to, you want to get there much like it was probably when you were younger and you were the last one to show up to the party. Your friends were waiting on you and you would speed and run red lights and drive recklessly just to get there just to find out that you really didn't miss anything yet. <laughs> All the while incurring increased risks damaging your own personal property and other people's property and maybe your own and other people's lives and health. Well, in trading is no different because there's two main motivators in this world, sex and money. They are the two strongest influences over the human mind. And while I'm not going to be talking about sex in this podcast, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about the influence of money and how it affects your ability to trust a model and how we can master it so that way you can trust knowing your model will deliver. One of the things that permeates the industry in terms of our community, we come across as uh, a bunch of braggarts, a bunch of... Uh, snooty individuals thinking that, you know, we have what works and everything else doesn't work. It's superior to everything else, but there are other ways to make money. And the secret to making money is managing it well. Because as long as you don't risk too much and you stay in the game long enough, you can be profitable. I don't like that way of thinking. It just sounds like surviving. And I, I don't like the idea of promoting the idea that you should be thankful you just made it out alive in any trading day. And for some of you, perhaps most of you, probably feel that's exactly what it feels like when you endure a trading session and you get out without blowing your account. You get out without having a major drawdown or get out with taking a loss at all, just getting the costs of commission covered and you whew, dodge that bullet. If you feel that way, if you apply what I'm going to talk about today, you'll be far less likely to feel that again. They're all normal things. They're all characteristics of a, a developing trader. But many times that developing trader wants to go out there too quickly, ill-prepared, to navigate the financial storms that these markets can create. The first topic I want to touch on is impatience. I kind of like mentioned it briefly in the opening here, but I think that largely this is the, the biggest hurdle in front of every trader. When I first started talking about Forex and Baby Pips Forum, uh, one of the first things I mentioned to anyone that would be willing to listen or read what it was I was sharing is you're going to need a lot of patience. And for the old hats in here that have been with me since then, you know that's true. I said you're going to require a lot of patience. And either you're going to forge it, not fake it, you're going to forge it, you're going to create it, it's going to be made manifest in you because of 
putting in your due diligence of learning how to sit still. When you're not ready to do anything, you have to remain still. One of the things I found interesting living at the house I'm at now, uh, we have like little groups of deer that you know frequently come out and in the early morning and in the late evening, they'll come out. Sometimes they're 15, 20 strong. And they had these little ones that come with them. And whenever they see something, the smallest of them immediately drop down. You can't see them hardly. What are they doing? Remaining still. Why? Because they don't have the knowledge. They don't have the experience. They don't have the plan of action to do anything to protect themselves. And to be honest with you, I don't know if it's by instinct. I don't know if it's taught to them by their their parent. But it's a skill set that every one of you, as a fawn, a little tiny little fledgling trader needs to learn and be comfortable being still. It's safe. It's absolutely safe. In the market, it can't bite you until you get in there. On the sidelines, the only thing that's hurting you is your pride and your ego that you didn't do something. But many times it tricks you thinking that you really knew what you were doing. But really, if you were honest, did you tell anybody in advance? Was it public knowledge that you thought it was going to do this very thing, go only this low, then go up to that very high? And that entire run, you wouldn't have any adversities or any kind of anxiety? You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. And I see many people, even in my own community here, that are brand new that do that kind of stuff. You see it permeated in the industry across social media. Everybody everybody knew it was going to do something after it happened. And when you talk like that and you really didn't believe that was happening, you didn't believe it was really in the chart, you weren't one-sided in your analysis, what you're creating is this overwhelming sense of impatience because what's going to happen is you're going to trick yourself by lying like that. That you're ready to trade. One day, something's going to happen and you're going to feel like you need to do something to change the way you feel about your life, your present circumstance. And you're going to go in there and try to press a button and the results are not going to be favorable. Because of impatience. How do you overcome impatience? Well, it stems from a lack of experience. Experience in the sense that, number one, you have to know how these markets can hurt you. It, obviously, it's, it goes without saying that if you're wrong, you lose money. But you have to have the experience knowing who you are. That's the first step. And all of the things I put you through. That's the first thing you're trying to discover, who you are as a person, what makes you tick, what makes you think, what makes you want to take a trade, what's occurring in your mind at a time when you think that there's something going on in that chart. That's the biggest hurdle. Every single person that's ever going to amount to anything as a trader, profitable, consistently profitable wildly profitable the central tenant to all of them is they know themselves very well and they know how they will derail themselves and it's not a comfortable or popular topic when i talk on it but it's paramount it wasn't until i understood how i could unravel myself doesn't matter how many gizmos and things i can see in price action if I'm miswired, if I'm off center, like I feel now, which is why I'm doing these. If I, if I do this, it kind of allows me to discharge instead of going into the market and trade. Yeah, you know, I made pretty good yesterday trading, but I wish I wouldn't have done it. I'll say that again. I wish I would not have traded yesterday. I broke a rule yesterday. 
And while I left with something, the win doesn't outweigh the fact that I know that I did not follow my rules. And I feel guilty. I feel like my hands are dirty. And in some ways, part of this Twitter space or X space, <laughs> what do we call it now? It's something of a confessional. You know, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And I am a human being. I have emotions. I have a family. And my oldest boy has recently hurt himself. And I'm wrestling with a lot of different emotions. Fear. I'm anxious about him getting through the last stages of his healing. I'm angry at him for not wearing a helmet. And I went into the market yesterday and I wanted to do something. In fact, I told you yesterday, I want to do it, but I shouldn't. But I moved to the part of the house where nothing could distract me. And I gave the devil idle hands. And idle hands, well, you know what they say. They'll find trouble. And thankfully, it worked out in my favor yesterday, but I wish I wouldn't have done it. Now, as a mentor, as an educator, as a teacher, I want you to know that I'm prone to do those things. And you think that I'm a, a saint with patience. I'm one of the most impatient people. I have very, 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 very small patience. But I had to work very hard to be patient as an educator. So when you wrestle with it, just know that it, it's not just you. I do too. Everyone else doesn't. Everybody says they don't are liars. It's liberating when you're honest. It's liberating when you come to terms with the fact that what makes you impatient is the very lack of experience and the experience of knowing how you are going to think. How will you respond to that stimuli when you see that market move a particular way, fast up, fast down, or consolidated? One of the weirdest things you're going to encounter is you'll think when the market's being held in consolidation, you feel like you're going to know how it's going to break out. And you start anticipating, yeah, I think it's going to go up there. How do you know that? How do you know that? You just started. Do you have a, a journal, a track record of you trading with that idea, that insight, and it works? Or are you just thinking impulsively about what you may expect in price or what you would like to see. And you're projecting your will on price in a time of ignorance as a developing student. And I don't mean that to be derogatory. I mean, in terms of the lack of your understanding, the, the lack of your ability, that is a state of ignorance. And everyone had that in the beginning. But you have to know that you have zero or very little experience when you first start. And the experience mostly is about knowing what you're going to do that causes you to react. I'll give you a couple of scenarios. If the market runs real quick, as soon as you sit down in front of the charts and you're expecting something to happen, or you join a community or you're in a Discord channel, or you're among a, a, a number of other people that are sharing openly what their opinions are about the marketplace or one particular market, and you're watching it, if you're brand new, and I know this is going to feel like me kicking sand in a lot of faces of people that are trying to start communities or have a community, but I, I really want you to be honest, okay, and think about this and apply it to yourself. Even if whatever this community is, if it's free or if it's by pay wall, in other words, you're paying to be a part of it, you're actually conditioning yourself to be responsive to a collective mindset that may not be all that in tune with what really is going to happen in the marketplace. In layman's terms, you're hanging around in a mob and you're thinking only based on what the collective mob 
mentality is going to say about that market. And if you if you've never paid attention to it, just watch and see how the ones that come out openly and say, yeah, I think the market's going to go up. I think the market's going to go down. That's why I love going into the few, the handful of live streamers I like watching. And this is the only reason why I like watching it. I want to see what their audience thinks about the marketplace. I want to see how the sentiment shifts in their chat window if they make it available. Or I want to hear how they themselves, the presenters, think. If they start talking very dogmatic about how they know it's going to go up here, it's just going to have to do this. And if I see a setup, I know I got a 99% likelihood I'm going to make money there. And that sounds arrogant. That sounds condescending. It sounds ignorant to say something like that to some of you, but it's the honest truth. I'm not watching other YouTubers to learn anything. I want to see what a retail trader's mindset is about the market at the very time I'm anticipating my algorithm to spool a specific direction. And that's it. Some of them are entertaining to watch. But if you're part of a community like that or a Discord or Telegram or whatever it is that you're a part of and you don't know how to trade, you don't have a model, you don't know what you're doing, the absolute worst thing you could ever do to stifle your proper development is to be part of a group of people that are going to inspire you to do things many times after the fact. Everybody in the room will come to the consensus that, oh yeah, this was this market's going up after it starts running. I'm not saying there won't be rock stars amongst the community that generally get it right here and there. But what you're actually doing is you're conditioning yourself and building the wrong kind of experience. You're looking for a hand-holding experience versus how I'm teaching you. You're going to walk alone. And it sounds scary in the beginning. It sounds intimidating. And that's why I share when we do Twitter commentary or I'll share my analysis beforehand on market reviews. I'll say, I think it's going to go here. I'm lending you my experience in the best way I can, because that way you can submit to that idea, go into the charts and study with that idea in mind, not listening to a bunch of chatter from people that may not even know how to trade or they themselves are reacting to price and feeling impulsive. You don't know, you don't know these people. You don't know what they've done. You don't know if they're really taking a trade. You don't know if they've been taking 15 trades before they even open their mouth up in these communities and they're in severe drawdown. And they just want to feel right inside by calling it publicly, but never divulging that they just went into serious drawdown or blown their account or their funded account or failed their combine. So the experience that you're trying to gain should be the proper kind of experience. That means Sitting down, learning about the market themselves, whatever pursuit you're going to go after. It doesn't have to be mine. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be what I teach. You can apply what I'm saying today to whatever approach to trading you want to do. Because if you use these rules today I'm sharing, you stand a far better chance of being profitable with whatever I teach or what everyone else is teaching and you have sound money management, you stand the best chance of finding consistency and profitability if you think like I'm going to show you today. So don't think I'm trying to contort your mind and brainwash you to only be a, a viewer of ICT concepts only and nothing else can work. That's, that's not the message here today. Every other message has been that. <laughs> I'm not going to shy away from that. But today, I kind of like want to be a, a broad spectrum of insight, opinion. And it may not hit some of you like I'm aiming. That's okay. But somebody came here and needed to hear it today. So that's what I'm, I'm doing. But your lack of experience in how you are going to relate to the actions in price. That is the root or foundation of your impatience. You just don't know what you're going to do what am I going to do if this happens? Oh, well, let me rush through this part because it's uncomfortable not knowing myself, not knowing how I'm going to react. That's one of the reasons why I never drank alcohol and why I never did drugs. 
I've watched my family do things recklessly and tear their lives up. And my father went to prison because he gave himself over to substance abuse, which lowered his inhibitions. And then when you have a mental disorder that like he has, you're more prone to want to end somebody's life. And that's what he did. And he's serving time for that. Went up for parole recently. I'm not sure how that went. I don't communicate with him, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out, by the way. But the next thing is impulsiveness. If you're an impulsive person, what you're doing is you're showing signs that you have a lack of knowledge of price. So the normal progression is while a trader starts this journey, the thing they overlook first and foremost is they themselves. Once they get a better grip on who they are as a trader and they feel like they can, they can conquer themselves in the personal sense, that doesn't mean that they have conquered the uncertainty about what price does generally. What separates me and our community from most others is when we talk about price, when I'm referring to price, I speak from a position of authority, authorship. This is what my algorithm is going to do. This is what it's been coded to do. This is what it's going to deliver. Just watch. Versus we got to wait for our indicator to show us something. We got all of our eyes on this indicator here. These indicators, when these things do this, price will do that. That's total bullshit. That's bullshit. Price has no respect of any of that stuff. It just happens to be there, but it has no, re no reason, no rhyme behind why price is doing that. Serious. I mean, it's just the way it is. I know it feels like it. It feels like it's got some kind of sorcery hold over top of price and it's going to make it do something, walk it on a leash. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. VWAP is a fucking joke myth. It ain't real. It's just in there just like any other thing. A stochastic divergence. You can find thousands of times where a stochastic divergence didn't do shit for price. It just kept on going. Impulsiveness stems from the lack of knowledge of price. You have to understand the central tenets of price delivery. That takes a lot of time. You can't rush that. It's not like you can go out there and buy technical analysis from A to Z book and think you figured it all out. I own that book, by the way. <laughs> I thought I was going to figure it all out when I was 20 years old. I was like, man, let me buy that book there. And oh, wow. this And all this is a small little snapshot of this is an indicator. This is what it used for most. Okay, well, now I know how to use it. I didn't know what I was doing. And what I was placing my in interest and focus and time studying was things that was manipulating price. Think about that. That's what these indicators are doing. They're taking data that has already been delivered in price action. And they're applying mathematic mathematics and equations and, and compressing and contorting and torturing that data to spit out some kind of, here, look at this. Instead of, where's price going? How is it delivering right now? Was there any manipulation recently? Was there any stops rated while you're expecting it to go higher? Did it trade down into an inefficiency while you were expecting it to trade higher at a time of day when you expect it to run? There's a difference between what it is I'm trying to teach you to focus on versus everybody else's stuff. I'm not trying to take your attention away from price. I'm taking your attention right to price, but specifically at the right time. My algorithm delivers on time and price. It will not do anything but unless manual intervention steps in. That means the powers that be say it wants to go here, it will go there, and it will do it in short order, and it will not respect your stop loss. It will not allow you to get out at the stop loss price. 
that's a trade that you were in, if you've ever endured that, you experience manual intervention. Because the algorithm will not spool like that. That's not, it doesn't, it's not delivering price algorithmically when it does that. That's manual intervention. That's risk. That's the thing that everybody has to understand about. Every, every instance, every single trading session, every single trading day, every instrument that's tradable is open to that risk. Excluding that, and you never know when it's going to be there entirely. Generally, there's times you know, around the economic calendar you can anticipate that. I've taught that. We've talked about it before. I'm sure there's going to be people that's going to mention, okay, well, we'll talk about it now because I didn't see that video. No, watch the video. There's no shortcuts here. You're an asshole, ICT. That's okay. That's your opinion. I'm a prick. I'm not an asshole. The lack of knowledge about price and its delivery, you put that to bed when you study conceptual ideas, things like my core content mentorship playlists, month one through 12, things like the Market Maker Primer playlist, the 2022 mentorship playlist, the Silver Bullet, the TGIF. You're bringing yourself closer to the general idea of what price can do in certain instances. What you should do with that information is determine how you feel drawn to certain aspects of what it is that the market does. Are you a type of trader that likes to go against everybody else and go against the market? Don't fight that. You're contrarian. That's all that, that that's all that that means that you're a contrarian. That means that you have to wait for instances where the market's literally just careening higher or lower and you're comfortable fading that. And you can make lots of money doing that if you know what you're doing and you're waiting for a specific thing to occur in price. Now, admittedly, that's one of the hardest things in trading. So, as a contrarian, you're wired way different than most people. But I have a way of teaching that you can take that contrarian mindset and apply it to any time frame with a very specific model, 2022, the fair value gap, silver bullet idea. They're all contrarian. No, they're not. They're, they're trend following. No, they're not. They're whatever you want to encapsulate at that moment in time if you cut enough of the candles off to the left because we don't have to look left to see what prices did all the time we just need to know what time is it where's the draw on liquidity remember those times that i would share on twitter what do you see and it'd be a small little section of price action and invariably somebody would come for there's not enough data here this is ridiculous really Encapsulate the entire hour of 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock in the morning, New York local time. I was doing things just like that. Smart guy. All that stuff is there for you to narrow your focus into what you're going to be drawn to as a trader. Are you a reversal trader? Contrarian? Do you, do you fight against the trend? Okay. That's inherently ingrained in your personality. I can't fix that. And you're not going to undo it either. So you might as well find a way to apply that to price action because price action is not going to bend its will to you. It's not going to say, you know what? Andy just started trading and this guy's really strong willed. I'm going to bend to his will. You know, who am I as price, the markets themselves? How am I going to you know, continue doing what I'm doing and not give it to Andy? That's not how it works. But it's weird how some of us come into the marketplace neophytes brand new and we think that you know what <laughs> i'm gonna whip this shit's ass it's gonna be easy it's gonna bend to my way i'm gonna conquer it i'm gonna master the market let me tell you something i wrote this shit and i'm not the master of it because anybody that's in a seat of authority higher than me can go in there and push a button slide a little thing over here and says the price is going to run higher than you thought it was going to go in the opposite direction that's manual intervention that is not me Moving my stop too close, too fast, too soon, and getting stopped out. 
that's an error on my part. That's an error on your part as a trader. I'm talking about where you're in a trade and all of a sudden it's going 50, 75, 100 plus handles just like that. That's not an error in trading. That's you getting ran over by a Mack truck and a convoy is behind it. And it just keeps and, and, and over and over and over again, you're getting ran over. That's the risk in these markets. Every single time you get in the marketplace, that is there. And I've been telling all of you, we are going to see some wild ass shit in currencies. And I am not opening myself up to that risk. That's the reason why I'm not trading Forex. I didn't forget how to trade Forex. I don't think that what I'm saying here is saying that Forex is not favorable or can't be profitable because I have students and you see other people in other school of thought that they're making money trading Forex. I'm not personally accepting that level of risk because it's going to be violent. When the Swiss and the Euro were depegged, we're talking about that. You can't survive that. I can't survive that. Brokerage firms didn't survive that. It's you know, that's an extinction level event in trading. But you have to understand that that's always there. That risk is always there. And stop loss orders will not protect you from that. Putting that aside, you have to know what the normal delivery of price is. When does the market usually have a spooling event. That means where it starts to run in one direction. It doesn't need to be fast. It doesn't always have to be a low resistance liquidity run where it's here one minute and in a couple minutes later, it's already up 50 handles. It just means it starts to go into a specific buy or sell program. That's not a buy and sell model. A buy program is when price or institutional order flow just starts delivering Higher prices. It doesn't matter how many people are buying it. It has absolutely no fucking reason why price is going up. Doesn't matter how many contracts or buyers or sellers are coming in. It's being offered continuously. That's a buy program. It's going to just keep offering at a higher price. Keep hiring, higher, 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 higher. And it it just keeps doing that. When markets move up, they're in a buy program. It has absolutely no cause and effect associated with. The amount of volume of buying and selling. That is the biggest fucking myth this industry pulls over everybody. And the people that work in the financial industry, they buy that shit. They spoon feed it and they say, oh, yep, that's what it is. And they get on CNBC to talk that bullshit. They get in these podcasts. They get on their YouTube videos. They write fucking books. And it's all fucking fiction. These markets are controlled. Before there were digital markets where everything is automated now. Men would sit here and just run the market just like this. That's the way it was. That was the market makers, not a dealer at a desk who say, I'm a market maker. You're a fucking dealer. You can't control price. You facilitate a buyer and seller together. Yeah, that's right. That's wonderful. But you aren't controlling where price is going. That's a market maker. That's what a central bank does. They run everything. You can't stop it. You're not going to fucking change it. You ain't going to master it. I can fall victim to it. Whenever they want to go in there and change the shit up right then and there, that's manual intervention. But they're not going to do that every single day, every day, every session, every week. Because nobody would trade then. They only want to go in there once in a while and clean the table. That's what happens. That's the way it works. That's the real market. That's how these things operate. And for some of you, maybe you've been trading for a while, maybe even profitable, and you hear that kind of stuff, and you're like, this guy's full of shit. Okay. Bring your shit here live, and I'll do my shit live, and I'll run circles around your fucking ass and be more precise than you've ever fucking seen. I'll be a surgical precision artist, and I will make your shit look like fucking clownery. It's simple. Don't talk from the sidelines. But you have to learn what these markets do through price delivery. And if you do that, you remove impulsiveness. What is impulsiveness? You're watching price. 
you're among some chattering community of people on a telegram or a discord or whatnot. And you're simply waiting for something to happen in price and it starts running higher. What's everybody going to do? Oh, I'm buying. Oh, it's going up. Everybody will find their voice then and say, it's going higher. Of course it is. It's going off 30 handles. It's running. And then you feel like, I got to get on. I got to get on that. And what do you do? Buy it. Buy it. I got to buy it right now. Because it might keep going up to where? I don't fucking know, but it's going to go up because look what it's doing right now. That's impulsiveness. And some of you are fucking laughing right now and smiling, thinking, shaking your head. This motherfucker just pegged me again. Yes, we've all been there. I've been there. But the only way you combat that and you keep it at bay and you conquer it is to learn about price delivery. That means you're not even back testing. You're just studying what price is likely to do most times. In certain instances, in certain circumstances, the market will create market reversals. It'll create continuations. It'll create range bound opportunities. Admittedly, I can't stand trading inside of a, a, a narrow range. I can, but to me, it's too tedious. It pisses me off. I'll have more losing trades than I, I like to have. And I can come out of that, but I just don't like that. It's a waste of my fucking time doing that. I know I can sit on my hands and wait for the time when I know the market's going to run or offer me swings intraday where I can operate and, and do well. Get in, take mine, and go home. And leave it to the rest of the people to try to figure out what they're doing with it. But your impulsiveness is conquered by the study of general price action and understanding what's available in terms of how markets move. What's the benefit of that? Knowing what to do for yourself as a trader in terms of pursuing certain aspects of trading. Some of you can't do well in a trending market like it completely does you in like you would love to be in a, a range bound environment you like that kind of thing okay that's a that's a strength for you when you uh, when you identify that then you uh, you can go in and zone in to that type of condition in the marketplace every time frame every single day has that occurring you're going to find that Somewhere in every trading day, on any one given market, you go down low enough in a time frame, you'll see that very characteristic in price. And you can use that to trade. That's what I mean by understanding and having a knowledge, a general knowledge of how price is delivered. It moves from consolidations to expansions to reversals. Knowing that ebb and flow, how it does it. And then applying it from a higher time frame, monthly, weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 15 or whatever time frame you want to use. You navigate with that price delivery continuum from higher time frame to lower time frame. And even if a move has already started on the daily chart and it's ran several hundred handles or whatever on a big day, you know that you're not going to be impulsive the next morning. I got to go in there and chase that. It's going to keep going down, which is the first rule I told you. On a large range day, what do we do? Lower our expectations on the morning session. That doesn't mean that the market can't run. It doesn't mean that you can't take a trade. It just means that you, as a developing student, you, as a new trader in the making, you're not there yet. Don't have a hard opinion immediately the next morning after a large range day. Wait, that's amateur hour. Everybody is going to be thinking the same thing. It should keep going lower, and they're going to be waiting for that. But what happens if it doesn't? Perfect. Starts trading up into the previous day's range if it went down. And as long as it doesn't go across half of that previous day's range, the highest probability short is going to exist in the lower half of the previous day's range. And if it can't get one quarter into it from its low, and it starts giving you a breakdown in market structure on lower time frames. You have all of the hand that needs to be shown to you at the poker table that this is what the market's about to do. Then it will go lower. 
But retail will see that running up and think, oh, it's going up. It's going up. It's going to go up. It's going to keep, it's going to fill in that liquidity void. Bullshit. It's going in the price in a short-term premium. Then you wait for a shift in market structure, which is not a break in structure. It's a shift in market structure. So many people call on things a break in market structure. No. A shift in market structure. When there's an established bias or an order flow or a sell program that's entered into the marketplace and it's been going lower. When it moves against that, all you're doing is building a short-term premium. And then you're going to wait for the market to shift back into a sell program. It's not a break in market structure. A shift in uh, market structure is a continuation of the existing narrative and or buy or sell program. That's it. That's the definition. I want an ICT dictionary. <laughs> Take fucking notes because I'm talking about it all the time. But if you're just listening to it and eating fucking Cheetos, you know, it's not going to work for you. Okay, it's just, you know, something to listen to. You're not going to be able to use it. The, the next tenant is fear. Fear is the lack of journaled case studies. You're fearful that this isn't going to work. It's not going to work for you. It's worked for everybody else. ITT can do it. But I know as soon as I get out there and I try to do it, these assholes are going to change the algorithm. <laughs> I'm going to waste my time. I'm, I'm afraid it's not going to work for me. I have so many profitable students that had that same fear. How do you get over it? By backtesting and journaling case studies of what you are expected to do when you're trading live, what you're trying to see in price action. And that way you see how many times it works, how many times did it fail? How many times did it go into a certain measure of drawdown? How many handles did it go against you before it started moving in your favor? How long did it take from your trade entry using the worst case entry point, not the best, and then when it got to your objective, whatever some liquidity would be or inefficiency it would be trading to? Your target is always going to be the opposing inefficiency. That means a fair value gap below if you're short. You're looking for an inefficiency to target or you're looking for a low or relative equal lows. So you're looking for sell side or a buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency. That's your two targets when you're shortened. How fucking hard is that? That's not complicated. Stop listening to these fucking asshats out there saying that I'm overcomplicating. They're out there waiting for a fucking random time when an indicator is supposed to say something. I know exactly what the fuck I'm doing by the fucking minute. Every single fucking trading day, I know what minute I'm going to fucking trade. I know what time my fucking targets are going to get hit. Don't fucking believe me? Bring your shit. Let's go. Bring all your fucking indicator horse shit, and I will compare and contrast and roll your ass like a fucking spliff and smoke your ass in front of everybody. Stop leaving comments in these fucking people's channels about me. Come right here, motherfuckers. Fear is easily conquered. Easily conquered. Once you go through the process of collecting the resources and case studies, where it worked in the past. And what you're doing is, is you're training your brain to see these examples. By retention, doing it over and over and over again, you're giving yourself pseudo experience. That means that you're seeing something that's already happened, but you're putting annotations to it in a journal and you're really placing a lot of significance on that as if you were there. And because you're making it meaningful to you, it's like writing a love letter to your future self. This is what you did so well. And I'm proud of you being able to see this as it happened. Sounds silly. Sounds weird, right? But that's how you have to treat it. You're going to nurture yourself and encourage yourself and be the biggest cheerleader for yourself. And leave no opportunity for anybody to come in and fuck it up. You don't want anybody else's opinion. You don't want my opinion. As much as you think you do, you don't want my opinion. Your subconscious doesn't want to hear from inner circle trader. He doesn't want to fucking hear. She doesn't want to hear. You don't want to hear anything from anyone. This is your, this is your fortress of solitude. No one can hurt you here. Your journal is your fucking secret weapon. 
It's the greatest fucking trading book you're ever going to read, and you're writing it yourself. You can't make it more intimate than that. It's your experiences, your study time, your focus, where you can be honest with yourself and not be embarrassed about, you know, you, you maybe expected something else that day. And you can say it sweetly in annotations without being negative because your subconscious is going to retain that. Your subconscious doesn't remember things vaguely. It doesn't do that. It records things that are heightened, whether it by be euphoric or fearful, extremely pleasant or painful, inspirational, desperation. There's no middle ground in your subconscious. Everything is reactive by black and white, good and bad. It's just the way it is. So you have to take that into account when you're training your brain. And this is a, a very integral part to learning how to do this. You have to condition yourself. That's why you can't do it in a very short span of time. Your brain is extremely complex. It's extremely powerful. And if you feed it the wrong things, it will scare the living shit out of you and you'll never learn how to do this. Stop forcing it. Stop rushing it. It has to be meditative. It has to be something that you do as a daily ritual. Even on weekends, you have to feed your mind constructive, positive learning case studies where you see these things happening in the past. You're fearful that it's not going to work for you because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. That's all. That's all it is. I am afraid of heights. I have no shame in saying it. I don't have any control over it. I tried to conquer it. It is what it is. I'm not going up into a fucking perfectly good airplane just to jump out that bitch and say I survived a descent with a parachute on my fucking back that I don't have confidence. It may open up and do what it needs to do. That's a, a level of risk that I'm not willing to take. But that's the equivalent of what you're trying to do without any training. You want to go up to the heights of whatever that airplane. Yeah, don't worry about the training. I, I didn't I didn't come to the training day. I don't know, really know where the the, the, the ripcord is for the, the parachute. But I, I want to get up there and do what they're doing because it's going to be fun. You don't know if you're afraid of heights. You don't know if your blood pressure is going to drop and pass out. You don't know if you're going to be conscious to, to do all those things, to survive the descent. You don't know if you're going to have a heart attack. You don't know yourself. I know myself. I'm not fucking going up there. <laughs> okay? It's as simple as that. So I, I conquer my fear by avoiding that situation. The way you conquer your fear about trading is you condition yourself to find the atmosphere, the, the, the conditions, the profile in the marketplace, not market profile in the sense of volume bars turned sideways you know, vertically on your chart and have all that bullshit on there. I'm talking about profile in sense like a schematic, like how the market will behave. Whatever that is for you, for some of you, it might be as simple as I want to do a classic ICT buy day where you're waiting for the opening. You want to wait for a Judas swing to drop down, maybe going into take sell side liquidity out on a lower time frame or trade into a buy side and balance sell side efficiency fair value gap. And then you're buying that with the expectation you're going to hold it for the entire range and you'll get out in the last hour of trading. And you're going to wait for instances where that can manifest itself in price. It won't be every day. But you're okay with that. Because you're not after trying to impress everybody that's day trading as you being an everyday trader. Which rolls us into greed. Greed stems from the lack of trust in yourself and or your model. Wait a minute. How can that be? If you're greedy... And you're saying that I'm greedy because I don't have a lack of, I have a lack of trust in myself and or my model. How can I be greedy? Because you want a, a lottery mindset. You think that this stuff works. Yes. But it just might be the day that you go in there and try to do it. It might cause you losing money. It may cause you losing peace of mind. It may cause you cause self-doubt. 
and you may blow the account. And you'll hear people out there that never show you that they make money. They'll tell you, you got to push your edge. When you're making money, you got to push your edge. Keep going in. Keep, keep, keep going. No, 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 no. I teach plateaus. What is more likely for you to succeed? From the bottom of a mountain slope, if it was a completely smooth 45 degree angle up to the peak of it, you're brand new. You, it's the first time you've been there. What's more likely and sustainable for you to start running at the fastest pace that you have and can do and start to run from the base of the mountain in a 45 degree slope all the way up to the top? You're at the zenith of it. You're at the, the very pinnacle at the top. You're, you're at the highest point now. Can you sustain that highest fast pace in that? Chances are no. Think about when people ride the, you know, the uncertainty roller coaster with going up the Mount Everest. Nobody goes up there in a straight shot. They go up for a little while and they level out for a little while. And they have to allow their body to do what? Get accustomed to that new height. Lower oxygen. It's a whole, it's a whole process. So when you're climbing your equity curve and you're getting in and you're trying to find profitability and consistently profitable, each day, in the beginning, you think, I want to make this much money every single day, this percentage every single day. And when I'm winning and the market's still running, don't go back in thinking, I got to get some more out of that. Your model says, be done. You don't trust it. You think if you don't push, 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 push my edge, push my edge, get in there and do as much as I possibly can because the market's really running, you're losing sight. And you're pushing your entire career into one trading day. That's greed. That's the only reason why that happens. Greed. You think that you're going to make so much more and that one moment in time, you're thinking to yourself, this is the one that puts me over. You're fucking trading with nano lots. You're trading with micro lots. You're trading with one mini. Your life isn't changing. Okay. You're not retiring. You'll still see Carl tomorrow. Don't let this stuff mess with your head, thinking that you have to do something over leveraged, over trading, doing more than what's necessary. Your model says take the trade when it gets to your target, be done, be content, close the charts, and then refer back to it at a later time when you wouldn't be trading it. If you can't do that, you don't trust yourself. And if you're thinking that way, you shouldn't trust yourself. You have to physically remove yourself from the markets. Leave. Don't be around. Don't have the app on your chart. I'm, I'm sorry, on your phone. Don't do it. Or you don't trust your model. People are greedy because they think that their model is only working right then and there. So let's maximize it because it might not work in the future. It might stop working. I might not be able to find the same fucking setup that repeats every fucking day, every single week. I might get amnesia and forget that this shit doesn't fucking actually occur every single fucking day. Sounds silly when it's said like that, but that's exactly what you're doing. You're forgetting the fact that this stuff repeats. You're forgetting the fact that these things occur at a specific time of the day, specific days of the fucking week. All these things are repeating phenomenon. They're not random. These are, these are things that absolutely are coded. They're there because they're supposed to be there. They are set on a schedule. They're going to fucking happen. It doesn't matter how many fucking people are buying it or selling it on Reddit. They're not going to make the market do any fucking thing. They're going to fall victim. AMC. Perfect fucking example. But when that herd mentality, we're going to put the ship into the marketplace and fucking shaft these market makers, these billionaire hedge fund managers, we're going to bankrupt it. They're fucking laughing at you. This is their game. This is their casino. You're not going in there changing shit. You're not changing nothing. You have to play by the fucking rules. And I'm showing you what the rules are. Some of you are kicking and screaming saying, I'm not going to do it. Okay, don't comply. Fail. But don't fucking cry and bitch and say, my stuff doesn't work or nobody makes money because look around. We're all here. 
raising her hand saying, how you doing? How you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing fucking great. How are you doing? Are you wrestling still? Take stock in what I'm saying here today, folks. I promise you, one of these things you're you're stuck on. And that's it. It's That's the thing. It's you. Every single one of these things, I've talked about these four central tenets that keeps you from trusting and knowing that your model will deliver. It's all you. You. It was me. It will be the person that you see come up in the marketplace next. Your buddy, your friend, your coworker, your relative that says, hey, I want to do what you're doing once you find consistently profitable trading. And they'll have these thing, same things that they have to work through. And generally, they're in this order. Impatience, impulsiveness, fear, greed. See, greed, you don't really necessarily feel, feel greed in the beginning because you don't, you don't know if it can work or not. I don't think that the initial interest in trading and trying to make money is greed. That's just morbid curiosity because we're not really like average people to be willing to put ourselves through this kind of shit. Which is a testimony to a great deal of people that say, you know, traders are weak minded people. They're not. Even people that are consistently losing. Think about it. Think about what they're doing. If they're willing to keep resetting their account, they're willing to put more money into a trading account. Is that a weak person? Fuck no, that's not weak. That's somebody that's fucking determined. They're just misinformed. They have no idea how to control themselves and or find a model. If you give them control over themselves, coping skills to help them realize that they are the problem, and you give them a sound model, they will whip the shit out of you. Because they have the tenacity that's necessary in this business. This industry is a vampire. It many times sucks the lifeblood out of everyone. They don't want to do it anymore. I don't want, I don't want to do it. I had members in my mentorship that paid me. Uh, never listened to me. Never proved that they were doing anything. Never fucking used the insight about what I was saying about the marketplace. The euro was going to go here. The British pound was going to go here. The dollar was going to go here. It's going to keep going down until it goes here. That's what I do when I do reviews. I'm pointing to a higher time frame daily chart and submit to it. And then I'll show examples of what I did or what other people have done in the community. And they did something completely opposite. They blow their account and they fucking sent me an email. It's only one person that did this. One person sent me a fucking email and said, you ruined my fucking life, ICT. I did. I did by calling the fucking future before it fucking happened, made fucking profitable fucking students using the same fucking thing that you listened to at that time. I ruined your life. You're a fucking train wreck. You have to fix yourself. I can't fix that for you. I'm a realist. That's why I talk the way I talk. I know that there are going to be people out here that are going to try to do this stuff and blame everything externally on me something else, the fucking weather, whatever it is. You are a warped mind that needs to be fixed. And I don't have the skills or the ability to fix that. That's a head and ass syndrome. And you have to fix that on your own. I can't do it. I'm not qualified. But once you unfuck yourself, I can make you a profitable student. I can make you a profitable trader. I can make you a fucking millionaire if you just listen to me. But if you don't want to listen, you want to stay impulsive. I know he said it's going to go here, and he's been fucking right about 90 fucking 5% of the time. But today, I think he's wrong, and I'm going to go in and fade him and then lose your ass. You don't want to own it? You don't want to swallow? That's on you. I'm still sleeping the same way I'm sleeping, living the way I'm living. All my students that are making money and doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're not skipping a beat either. You thought I forgot about you. I didn't forget about you. I think about you all the time. You're an audience of one. I've never had anybody send me an email that said I ruined their life, but you. And it's been a year. In two months or so since you sent that. And I think about you all the time.
I'm hoping that you're fixing yourself. Because there's no excuse now. You can see it. There's people all around the world using what you've learned. And I made it even easier with the YouTube lectures. All that stuff, that 2022 model, I actually taught that in a commentary in the mentorship. But because most people don't take notes, they weren't paying attention, that was already taught. Literally spelled out. Went right over their head. All these things are simple to conquer, but they require time and application and replacing what you are negatively doing with the positive things I'm telling you to, to do. And over time, the default response internally is that you won't fall victim to these things. It doesn't mean you won't see or feel the impulses of them creeping in. You'll say, I know what this is going to do if I do that. I'm not going to do that. But there will be periods in your life when you're weak. And I'm mentally, I'm weak right now. I'm fatigued. I, my firstborn almost you know, took himself out. And I wanted a victim yesterday. I got it. But I did something I shouldn't have done. I traded in a time when I should not have traded. I gave myself over to my emotions. And I'm, te I'm telling you, even though I made money, that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. It's wrong. I should not have done it. And I feel guilty because as an educator, as a person that of principle, I know I should not have done that, but I'm at a weekend and I'm not, I'm not just, please believe I'm not justifying this at all, but I am absolutely human. I have frailties like all of you. And I am trying my best to wrestle through this. And one of the things I know I can do very well is go into the market and take from those that don't know. So once I did it, it, I reflected on it. And I, I thought to myself, I shouldn't have done that. So I'm confessing in front of you today that I beat the fuck out of him yesterday and I feel bad about it. Because I did it at a time when I shouldn't have done it. I was basically drunk, not on alcohol, but I had a bloodlust. I wanted to hurt somebody else because I'm in pain. I'm scared. I'm afraid. But my son, you know, he's not out of the woods yet. He's getting better, but he's not out of the woods. So once you get through all this stuff, how do you know your model will deliver? Well, you focus on how. How will you engage price? That means, are you going to be a day trader? Are you going to be a swing trader? Are you going to be a scalper? Some of you think, well, I want to be a scalper because... I don't feel comfortable in the marketplace and I want to get in and get out and I'll be able to, to avoid losing trades. Because if I can get in real quick, use these really small time frames, ICT is using 15 second charts now. You know, that's probably the answer. It's not. That's just me being me. You can trade on a daily chart. Trade less and do probably way better. If it fits your personality. I have a very short term attention span. I change my mind a lot frequently. So that's why I can I can excel in very, very small time frames. You may not have that. That doesn't mean you're stupid. Doesn't mean you're you know thick or incapable of trading. It just means that your personality is a little bit slower at pace. It takes you a little bit more information and time to figure out what you want to do. Okay, you might be a good swing trader. If you're really fucking indecisive and it's really taking you you know, a lot to come to the conclusion about what you think the market's going to do. You're a perfect position trader because it's going to take a whole lot more things to change your mind about the marketplace. And those words are as close as verbatim as I can get from what I learned from Larry Williams. He nailed that shit when he said that. And, that, and I believe that wholeheartedly. And when I applied it to myself, it worked. When I tried to be a long-term position trader, it was fucking murderous to me. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. 
every little fluctuation in price was driving me nuts. I couldn't, I couldn't stick with it. If you feel that way, you have to apply what your personality is to your trading and find an approach to trading, whether it be short-term, intraday, scalping, day trading, where you trade the full daily range, short-term trading, where you use the weekly range and you use four-hour or one-hour charts to time a setup that would be just like you would expect on the one-minute chart for like model 2022 or a silver bullet, that same mindset being applied to a four-hour, one-hour chart, you can be a swing trader there. Short-term trader there. If you know day trading, you can pyramid using smaller time frames within that price run and parlay it up to even you know, much more than you'd ever imagine. But you can't do that right away. It's a lot of things you have to learn. But you have to know how you're going to do it. That means how you are going to engage price. Once you understand what you're going to do in terms of how, what is it you're waiting for in price? The what. We're looking at four things here. How, what, why, and when. How you're engaging price. That means what your model of engagement is. Short-term trading, scalping, swing trading, position trading. But what are you patiently waiting for? What have you been doing case studies on? What are you conditioning yourself to anticipate in price action? Is it the silver bullet? Is it model 2022? Is it standard optimal trade entry? Are you looking for breakers? Like what, what is it you're looking for? Are you looking for reactions to old highs and reversals? So like turtle soup or climax reversal patterns because you're a contrarian. That's the what. That's that, that model. That your model, that's what you're looking for, what you're patiently waiting for. You're not shifting in and out of different things ICT's talked about before. The one thing that you feel drawn to in your studies that makes most sense to you, your early initial evidence of building an affinity for a specific thing I've either taught or mentioned, that's the one you start with. It doesn't mean abandon it when I release something new. You're hurting yourself when you do that. This is my shit. My creations, and I'm telling you, honestly, if you're dropping whatever you're working on, every time I present something new, thinking that's the thing that you needed better, you've wasted your time and you're wasting your, your valuable time in developing understanding about price and yourself. Because the first part of this presentation today is paramount to you ever finding how a model will deliver consistently. You'll be too busy wrestling with yourself. Why? Why? What is it you're doing in, in price action? What is it that you're doing that trusts that model? The why behind why price should be doing what it's doing. The narrative is basically what I'm saying. Why should price react this way? Why should it or why will it not do this very thing that you're expecting in price? You have to have an understanding of narrative. What makes this market likely to behave a certain way? If the market is expected to go lower, you've been anticipating the market going lower on the weekly chart. There's something down there, 150 handles below where we're at at the close on Friday. So your analysis on the weekend before the market opens up, you're looking at, you're anticipating that it's likely to draw down 150 handles. Okay, that sets the tone for your bias going into the week. Then you want to see how we open on Sunday. On Monday morning, see how we traded overnight what we did in the London session, and then how we primed for Monday's opening. What you would expect to see is a rally higher that's rejected. A clear and obvious shift in market structure with a displacement leg that has a fair value gap. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But you don't want that. You want fucking laser fucking lights and fucking shit flying across your fucking charts and all that kind of stuff because it's, it's entertainment then. Fuck entertainment. I'm entertaining myself with the fucking money I'm making, okay? I'm at war right now. I'm taking somebody's fucking head off in this marketplace. Everybody that gets in there, it's on the other side of my trade. It's falling on my sword. The why is why this market is going to fuck the average person that doesn't know what they're doing. That's narrative. How is this going to hurt the average retail trader? That's the most succinct, easiest, straightforward, 
No fucking punches held explanation of narrative because that's exactly what it's doing. The less informed street money, how is it going to unwind on them? How is it going to remove them? How is it going to take from them? How is it going to stop them out so they can give their seat up on the bus? That's narrative. You can't read a chapter in a book. I can't talk about it in a long-winded video or a playlist. It needs to be experienced over months, seeing what price does. So 40-day bullshit don't work. One-week boot camps don't fucking work. One year is a good foundation, but that's not enough either to be consistently profitable and that you'll know, you'll fucking know that your model will deliver. Deliver to who? You. Price is doing whatever it wants to do. It's unaware that you have an interest in taking a trade. You haven't, you haven't entered it yet. You're not in the marketplace. You're not part of the open interest right now. You're just in a part of, I'm watching price and see what happens. It's not even aware of you. But you have to trust this model will deliver for you. I love all of you as my students. I want to see you do all, all of you do well. But when I'm in a trade, this is the truth. I don't give a fuck if you're on the other side of it. I don't care. You made the mistake. You pay for it. That's what your mindset should be. Now, I'll leave it to you. You can wrestle with all that moral you know, bullshit about it. But the bottom line is, is whenever you win, whenever you make a profitable trade, you have taken from someone. And if that is a moral conflict for you, then you have to figure that out or stop trading. But here, we're fucking killers. We're savages. We're out here. We're meat-eating motherfuckers, vampires, sucking the blood out of the retail mindset. We are literally caving their fucking skulls in walking all over their fucking corpse and picking their pockets before we fucking leave. And if you want to say it any other way to make it more palatable for you, then that's your business. But that's, that's just the way it is for me. That's how I look at it. It's barbaric, yes. But that's how I look at it because I was that motherfucker that got stomped up and my pockets were picked when I was 20 years old. I know what that feels like. I'm coming back for retribution. I'm on my reparations, motherfucker. Give me my shit with interest. That's how I'm looking at it. Every time I go in there, I want somebody's ass on a silver platter. And I'm going home with it. Parading it around. That's, the, that's just the way it is. This is not 401k fucking investments, okay? Sit back and passively earn income. Fuck that. There's nothing passive. We are aggressively going out there taking it by fucking force. We're waiting in ambush, waiting for this shit. Come into our crosshairs. Step in this fucking vantage point, and I'm going to pounce on your ass. We are predators here. We are apex fucking predators. We're not scavenging. We're not going around and picking up what was left. We're not fucking vultures. To sit around and watch it. And when the real work's done, the carcasses that are left, whatever meat's left over, then they go over there and eat on that. Fuck that shit. I want the prime cuts. I want that shit fresh off the bone. Some of you vegetarians are probably squeamish right now. <laughs> Change it to whatever you want to call it. That's just how I think about things. So we talked about how, what, and why. But when? At a specific time of day, on a specific day, calendar and time of day. Everything, just like your favorite programs, the show Billions just came back on. And I, for whatever reason, I, I was unable to keep up with it. I got, I think it was like halfway through the first season. I know it's supposed to be a good show. And what I, what I liked about it and what I saw was, was good. But uh, does that fucking show or any show that you like watching just come on whenever it wants to fucking come on random times every day, every week? It's something different. Fuck no. It's scheduled. Your model is a scheduled delivery for you. You have work hours. You have a, a time window. This is when I'm going to work. And when it's done, I turn the shit off. When billions or whatever show that you like is watching, does it repeat as soon as it ends? Does it go right back on and play it again? No, 
You have to fucking wait until the next time it makes another broadcast of it. Patience is required. You're submitting to a process. The process is you're going to get it spoon fed to you here, there, a little on their time schedule. That's what the market does. That's all it's doing. And you can't force it. As much as you can't wait to see the next thing, so-and-so did this in the closing minutes of the, of the show. I can't wait to watch it. I hope to see this happen. You can't make it. You can't make it play sooner. But you try to apply that mindset to trading. I just took a trade. I made money. Man, it feels fucking good. Let me get there and do it again. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? That's not your model. That's retail fucking Rick at the driver's wheel. Hello. Hope you're wearing your fucking seatbelt because that's a fucking tree coming. When a specific time of day in the most refined way, silver bullet, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Folks, that's 60 minutes out of your 24 hours. You're going to spend most of it sleeping. I know some of you spend too much time sleeping. But that's a set window of time. It's the 60 minutes, 60 fucking minutes of your life. You have to be present. You have to be attentive. And you can change everything in your family tree. Yours and everybody behind you. One hour, one fucking hour can change everything for you. Why are you so anxious? Why are you so confused about what it is you should be looking for? It's going to form between 10 o'clock and 11 every fucking day. It's going to form between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock every single day. It's going to form between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock every fucking day. It's going to form between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning every single day. That's four of them now. Which one can your schedule, your time of of living through this existence on the spinning rock, what can you do? Which one can you do? I can't do any of them. I I need to be able to trade in Asia. Well, then you have to be a long-term position trader. You're going to have to hold beyond a scalp. You're going to have to trade the daily range because you can trade the Asian session. You can do that, but you have to be willing to sit through a lot of shit and be wrong more times than not. So your hit rate's going to be smaller. Your opportunity to trade will be more infrequent, but you can, you can trade that. What do you mean by that? When you're bullish, when the market opens up and it's in Asia and you're expecting it to go higher for a series of days, if you get some kind of a Judas swing in Asia, then a shift in market structure that's bullish. First fair value gap you get, buy it. Stop below the low. Let it go. Use the smallest leverage you can do. There it is. It's done. Teach me how to trade Asia. I just fucking did. But it doesn't seem satisfying enough. And for some of you that heard that and you think, wow, I want to trade Asia. What do I mean? What, do I, what does this mean by that? Right. You haven't spent time doing what? Working over that impulsive stage where you have a lack of knowledge of price. Mm. All these things is a natural progression through learning. But you're all in a hurry to skip certain aspects of it, ignore certain things about yourself that are going to be problematic and plague you, and be the very roadblock to you being successful or profitable. So with all this said, this is not this is not a winning strategy. What's missing? Sound money management, impeccable trade management. They're two topics in and of itself. They're completely in and of themselves, two different things. But if you apply that, you have a complete holistic approach to working towards being consistently profitable. And then you will know. You will know. You don't need me to convince you. You don't need a, need a Twitter space to encourage you and get you all riled up, get your fucking feathers all fluffed up. You won't need any of that shit. You'll know. I fucking know. Okay. Even though today is a shit day, 
I don't like to trade these days. I know I can go out there today and make fifteen fucking thousand dollars and not even fucking try. I can do that. I know I can. I can do. I can trade the non farm payroll tomorrow and make fifteen grand. So today and tomorrow, I can make thirty thousand dollars. Do you have the confidence right now with your model? You have a model. I have many models. I know I have a half a dozen of them that will be in there today. And they won't be the 2022. They won't be silver bullet. They won't be breakers. They won't be anything you know about. Oh, look at this guy. He's selling a book. I'm not teaching that in my book. <laughs> I'm not teaching that stuff. That's mine. It's for me and my family. But whenever you understand yourself and you've discovered the model for you, you will know when it will be in price. You'll know. You'll know when it was likely to form. You know that you'll be in front of the charts when it's ready to deliver it. You'll be anticipating it. And when it steps its ass in your crosshairs, you will gently hug the trigger and take it home. You will eat. And you'll eat well. You won't have any emotion about it. You won't feel sorry for the person that lost. You won't doubt that it won't continue. You'll know that you'll be able to do this again. You have a life skill. No one can take it from you. It can't be diminished. But you need to guard it. Mentally, don't let anybody have an, any conversation about it. Don't live your life on social media presenting everything about what it is that you do. Because what you're inviting is other people's opinion about shit that you you are not paying their bills. They're not going to reimburse you if you have a losing trading day. What fucking difference does it make if people know what you're doing? Be a gray man. They don't know you exist. You get in, you get out. Live your life. Do what the fuck you want to do. How you want to live it because shit is about to get really fucked up. And earning income, not getting rich, earning income is paramount. One mini contract with a $50,000 trading account funded whatever company out there that's doing it. I'm not repping anybody. I don't have the money to do that. I should tell you, well, there's ways to do it now that wasn't available when I was coming up. And when you do these types of things and you submit to the idea that, okay, 20, 20 bucks per, per handle, and I'm going to go in there, I'm going to try to go for 20 to 30. On average, net that a week. If you did that, even taxing it, doesn't that do a whole lot in terms of doing damage to the inflation that you're feeling right now? What's it costing you to live, to feed you and your family? Gas prices, energy prices, grocery bills. Lord forbid you have a medical emergency or something that takes you to a doctor. All that stuff's costing more money and it's going to be even more harder to get things. So all that stuff is going to be a source of stress. But you should be excited about learning this because you're going to have something that the majority of most people aren't going to have, hope. You'll have hope. You'll have the ability to know that whatever happens at your job and whatever they say, well, we can't really do anything to raise you up because we can't afford to do any kind of raise now. You didn't get the promotion you were looking for. To make more money. You won't have any grief about that. Because what you're doing is. You're building an empire. You don't realize it right now. But you're building a fucking empire. You might be working a job right now. Doing things you don't like. Making a little bit of money. Struggling right now. Everybody's been there. I was there. And it's hard. I know when you don't have anybody around you. To encourage you. To pat you on the back, say, come on, man. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You're going to get there. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the right things right now. 
If you're not doing what I talked about here today, well, guess what? It's going to be harder for you. It's going to be a lot more likely to be viewed as impossible for you if you don't think like this. These pages, okay, these little bullet points that I went through today. If it was mentioned in a book, you'd breeze right over it, wouldn't give a fuck about it. It's only impactful when you hear it. When you hear it and you do self-reflection, man, it hits. And you really have to come to terms with, this is where I'm doing it wrong. And now I know that's where my area of opportunity is to increase the aptitude in learning. Remove the obstacles for me to learn how to do this. You are the one that can do that. I can't do it. I can't change how you think and what you're doing and what you're holding on to. The bad habits, the character flaws. I revealed one to you. You never would have known. You never would have known. For the people that saw me share that trade in, in Q, like, wow, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, man. It comes with a caveat. You don't know that I'm regretting having taken that trade. You don't know that I wished I wouldn't have turned my charts on because you forgot that we're not supposed to be trading when we're going through grief, when we're sick, when we are hurting, when we're in a period of you know altered state. I guess one can argue I'm always in an altered state, right? <laughs> this motherfucker's stone cold crazy. That's all right. It's okay. Everybody is one time or another. You live on this rock long enough, you will too. And if you have people you care about, that you raised or love, and they're in pain or may not be with you for you know, the rest of your life, it makes you think about things differently. And I can only imagine if I was using substances like alcohol or drugs, I probably would be in jail. I probably would have done something that I, I would wish I never would have done. So that's the reason why I don't do it. I don't change my chemistry more than it already does on its own. It's hard enough to wrestle with what I have here. So I'm going to leave you with this thought. Recognition is the result of repeated exposure. When you're back testing and you're journaling, you are literally providing yourself a means of recognition through repetition. So if you only do a little bit of that, that's why you're not getting a lot of understanding or visibility in the right side of the chart. How does ICT know that? How did he know this? And how does these students doing this? He must have taught them something extra. That's the thing everybody's trying to sell my shit. The unreleased videos. The only thing I the only thing that's in there in that library is the commentary about what was going to happen next. It was already taught in the core content lessons. So if you're a joker out there trying to sell it and you are a schmuck that's trying to buy it from them, you're wasting your money because it's all been on the YouTube channel now. There it is. I am not on Instagram offering some bullshit mentorships. My Instagram has three things on it. That's it. And they're all un unrelated to my personal trading. There are so many people that are going to come forward in November. They're going to pretend to be me and they're going to rook a lot of people that just don't know. And that's unfortunate. I, I don't know how to stop it. I don't know how to keep it from happening because they're going to come in with these four essential tenets to preventing a model that will deliver for them. They'll be impatient. They'll be impulsive. Oh, I got to buy it. I got to do this. ICT's you know, not teaching everything here. I taught you more than you need. More than you need. You have a lifetime of learning with what's already on my YouTube. If I never put another fucking video out ever, if I never wrote these fucking books that's coming, you have enough. 
more than enough. But you can't be like my daughter who wants to be a perpetual student. <laughs> Avoiding adulthood and personal responsibility by, well, I'm in, I'm in school, dad. I'm, I, you know, I can only do so much. Well, that excuse is bullshit. You got to grow up. You got to take responsibility and do things like an adult. And in trading, you have to think like a well-rounded, responsible, disciplined adult. Can't treat it like a video game and think, well, I'll just respawn. No. Because every time you think that way and you do it, what you're inviting is an allowance for substandard performance. That's poor, that's poor performance. You don't want to be doing those things. You want to do what you have to do to keep your account in good standing. That means don't try to rock it up straight up the mountain, 45 degree angle slope at the highest rate of speed running. You make a little bit of money, enjoy it. Sit still. If you did it with five contracts, only trade with one for a week or so. Because if you made money, if, you're, if your largest gain in your account equity curve has just recently happened, you are fucking on goofballs right now. You're high. You're not thinking clearly. You are not thinking clearly. You might be thinking, wow, this is awesome. I'm way better than I thought it was. Or I'm on a roll. Let me keep going. And you won't see the curveball coming. And that one little curveball that caused you that small, measured, appropriate risk that was taken from you as a loss now, it will now start that process of, oh, this just killed my whole fucking vibe. This is a buzzkill. I got to hurry and fix that because I can get back to my feeling good vibration. And then you lose again because you're being impulsive, fearful that things are changing, and greed because you got to get back to that equity high you just reached. See how that cycle goes through? It happens all the time. You don't get that in Mark Douglas's book. You don't get that in any other psychological book out there on trading. This is the real mechanics of how a mindset shifts in profit and loss, win and loss, making money, losing money. All of these shifts in how you think about yourself and the markets and your model. It's always going to be doing this constant rotation back and forth through these four central tenets. And when you master them, you'll know, you will know your model will deliver for you. Because you're not in its way. So that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully you found something in it insightful. Hopefully I was an encouragement to someone listening. I believe someone had to hear it today. And it felt good to wash my hands because some of you probably didn't think about it. But I shouldn't have traded yesterday. And let that be a lesson to you. I feel guilty about making money yesterday. Average retail Rick wouldn't see it like that. But you have to be personally responsible. You have to be disciplined. Don't break the fucking rules. The rules are there. I'd feel worse if I would have had a loss yesterday. If I would have went home and had $1 less than I had, that would be like a stick in my crawl and fuck me all up for the whole holiday weekend. I know my model will deliver today. I know my model will deliver on non-farm payroll too. But I'm not touching it. Don't touch it either. Just have a four-day weekend. Enjoy yourself. And I will be back again on Tuesday with some kind of goodies, I'm sure. And I appreciate everything you've been doing for prayers for my son. I greatly appreciate me and my family. Love you for that. And enjoy your weekend. Be safe.